A meditator sat beneath a tree in the forest, practicing meditation. Every day they would watch a woodcutter cutting and taking away logs. One day they stopped the woodcutter and said, Listen, brother, you cut wood all day long, but you can't gather enough food for two days. Why don't you go further ahead? There is a forest of sandalwood trees. If you cut one tree, you will have enough food for seven days. The poor woodcutter did not believe them because he thought, As much as I know the forest, who else can know it? Cutting and gathering wood is how I make a living. What does this hermit know under this tree? How can he know what lies ahead in the forest? I have no desire to appease him, but what harm can it do? Who knows? Maybe they are right. There's no harm in trying. Let's see what happens. The hermit speaks with faith. He ventured ahead. When he returned, he bowed his head at the feet of the hermit and said, Please forgive me. I had many doubts in my mind because I believed that no one knows this forest better than I do. My father was also a woodcutter, and his father before him. We have been burning and cutting wood, spending our lives like this. We never thought that there could be something better beyond it. I am such an unfortunate person. If only I had known earlier, I wouldn't have spent half my life in poverty. The hermit said, Do not worry. When you realize it, it is never too late. When you wake up, it is morning. You go now and go and cut sandalwood logs. Now, in that woodcutter's days, he started enjoying himself. One day, he cut the logs and came back. There was no need to go to the forest for seven or eight days. He could easily sell them in the market and get a good price. Days passed like this. The woodcutter came one day a week to cut sandalwood logs and sell them in the market. One day, when he was about to go to cut the logs, the hermit stopped him and said, Since you have been cutting only sandalwood logs, you haven't gone further ahead. In your mind, you have never questioned whether there could be something more beyond sandalwood. I couldn't understand this. It never occurred to me to question whether there could be something beyond sandalwood. The woodcutter said, The hermit said, If you go a little further into the sandalwood forest, there is a silver mine. Leave cutting wood for me. You will go for one day. It will be done for two to four months. Now he began to trust the sadhu. Without thinking, he ran. He went there and saw that there was indeed a silver mine. He jumped with joy. Now he would come once in four or five months. He would take the silver and live comfortably for the next four or five months. This went on for a few years. One day, when he was going to the jungle to get silver, he met the same sadhu sitting under the same tree. The sadhu said to him, You're still collecting silver? Go a little further. There are gold mines there. When you come out of the silver mines, go a little further, and you'll see that there are actual gold mines. That much gold that can change your entire life. Now let's return to our story. After discovering the location of the gold mine, the woodcutter would take a phone with him and would only return to the jungle once a year. His life was passing by comfortably. Several years went by like this. After many years, one day when he was going towards the gold mine in the jungle, he met the meditating sage again. The sage, who was sitting under the tree, said to him, You will never go, will you, that I have to wake you up every time? He replied, I don't raise questions from my side. I didn't have the curiosity to go and see what else is there. The woodcutter said, My slow-wittedness didn't even think that there could be something greater than gold. I thought that gold would be the ultimate thing. The sage said, Oh, innocent man, go beyond the gold mines. There you will find diamond mines. When the woodcutter went and saw, he couldn't believe his eyes. There were indeed diamond mines. Now, the woodcutter would only bring diamonds once and return to the jungle after many years. With time, the woodcutter grew old. One day, when he was returning from the diamond mine, he met the same meditating sage under the same tree. The sage said, Oh, fool, now even diamonds couldn't stop you. Now even that woodcutter had become very arrogant. He had become very rich. He had built palaces. He said, Now leave me alone. Don't bother me anymore. What else could be greater than diamonds? That meditator said, I am greater than diamonds. You never thought about it. That this man sitting here is an extraordinary person. He knows that he is not just accumulating the treasures of the mines of diamonds. He is surpassing the heroes, greater than the heroes, and must have found something priceless. That's why he sits here, carefree, under the tree. You never thought about it. Listen to the words of that sage. Seth starts crying and holds the feet of the enlightened sage and says, 
I am also a fool who couldn't see that he left behind all the gold, silver, and diamonds. He must have some wealth greater than these jewels and treasures. It never occurred to me. I want to know what wealth you possess that makes all the wealth in this world insignificant. Listen to the words of the woodcutter. The enlightened sage tells him, That's what I want to tell you. The name of that wealth is meditation. The woodcutter says, But I don't know how to meditate. The sage says, Meditation is very simple. You have already collected external wealth. Now turn inward, sit comfortably and observe what is happening within you. If you have any experiences, don't hold on to them. Just observe. You may attain God, but don't try to grasp them. Just keep observing until all experiences, all thoughts become silent. But remember, never try forcefully to end any experience or thought. When there is no experience left, no thought remaining, then you will remain in the state of thoughtlessness. Neither the seer will remain, nor the seen. There will be only emptiness, and that emptiness leads. It is the lamp of consciousness, the lamp of self-knowledge for meditation. There is one thing that is most important, and that is patience. You should have so much patience within you that events may happen today or after many years, but you should always be ready for meditation. In our lives, like that woodcutter, we also have a mine of gold that can change our entire life. The only requirement is to recognize it, nurture it, and for us, it is the mine of gold, our mind, our knowledge, and it is invaluable in our lives. And nothing can be more precious than this.